everybody, so in front of me, I have Elegoo's latest offering in the FDM printer range. Now, Elegoo are a Chinese company who began in 2011 selling oh, Arduino kits, consumer electronics, that kind of thing. And it's my belief that a company's history really affects its um, ethos and how it approaches its product development and starting in what is uh, perhaps one of the hardest industries you can start in to satisfy people that is Arduino kits and electronics where the idea of support and sharing and good product are key to success uh, they really cut their teeth in perhaps the hardest way they could and they brought out their first filament printer I think it was in 2019 it was the Neptune one and it didn't look much different different from every other 3D printer around there. Then they brought out the Neptune 2, which is still available, and I believe that's about $160 or something like that. And I got involved with the Neptune 3 only 11 months ago when they sent me a Neptune 3 to review. Since then, I've obviously been doing an awful lot of 3D printing because I'm not a worshipper of 3D printers. What I want from a 3D printer is that it will well, do the job. It'll make stuff I can use without causing me a great deal of pain, worry, stress, and standing over it, nursing it to do everything that I want it to do. And these Elegoos really have fulfilled that need. Now, as I say, I've had these Elegoos for about 11 months. We're coming up to the one year review, and we really haven't had that much in the way of issues with them. And what issues we've had? I've shared with you and that's in the Anagoo playlist. So I've found them to be excellent machines for the price point, incredible. And they're really easy to set up and use, which is of course exactly what I want. I just want something that is a tool for me to do the job I want it to do without me requiring an enormous tool set to do exactly the same job. And these things fulfill that need. It's astounding, I think, what you can actually create with these things. One of the stories that I read about was this young lad who created a motor. It's Robert Sansone. He won a $75,000 prize for his innovation in switch reluctance motors that were 3D printed and didn't use any rare earth magnets. Places like the University of Sheffield are rethinking the electric motor with the aid of filament printers. Jet engines have been printed with filament printers. So these are, well, to quote the marketing of Elegu, the essential tool for improving creativity and probably every engineering student up and down the country is wanting a filament printer because they are just so enabling for what it is we want to do, study, think about or explore. And the issue with them have been speed. They take a little while to print things. Now that's never been an issue for me. I just set a print going and go and do something else. The engagement time, that is the time you stand over it is very short indeed, but the print time is still long. And what they've been doing is looking at bringing down that print time, which is where the Elegu 4 series comes in. And you're looking at things like uh, 500 millimeters per second. So that's with the top speed of this one using something like PLA Plus. The set speed is 250 millimeters per second, and you need to set that against 60 millimeters per second. So speed is an issue, and speed is one of the issues that this company is actually addressing. And certainly on the Neptune 4, it's blistering in how fast it can print, and I'm expecting the same thing from this kind of thing. Now, I am by no means an expert. I had no real contact with filament printing prior to 11 months ago when I got that first printer, but I found that it has changed my approach to these things. If you'd previously asked me, I would have said, no, rubbish, stick with the workroom. Now, if you asked me, I would say, this is an essential tool for moving you forward actually more quickly. So although you can produce things individually more quickly by hand, your contact time is actually longer. So the contact time is much shorter. The availability of tools is much better and the space you use is much more reduced and the amount you can produce, well, it's just astonishing. So 11 months I've had these things and I'm a convert and I can say that quite happily, but I'm a convert to the use of them, I'm not a convert to the worship of them. They are a tool to use and they're a very impressive tool indeed. But 
I've yet to take this one out the box. Now, like I say, this is the Mac Daddy. So the print bed is 420 millimeters by 420 millimeters by 480 millimeters. And if you think about it, that's half a meter cubed. Four of these like a printer washing machine. That's amazing how big that is for the speed that it's got. And of course it comes with other features, but first things first, let's get it out of the box, get it together and have a look at it. Okay, and that's it out of the box. And as I said, the machine comes in two basic parts. Here's the bed and here's the support arm here for the print head itself. And that's got four bolts that hold it on here. Now it's a large machine moving quickly. And so they've given a couple of extra support bars that fasten on there to that bit to keep it a bit more stable and upright. And this is the print head itself. When we look at the reverse of the print head, it's very uncluttered. There's a hot end here. Now it's a 60 watt all brass hot end with a ceramic heater underneath that rubber shoe right there. And the electronics is very clean and neat, which is there. And there's the front end of the print head with its cooling ports and it has a dual gear feed right here. The sensor isn't integral to this. There's a filament feed sensor to tell you when the filament's running out. And that's usually at the top of the Elegoo and it's the same here. And that's a real benefit because you can actually see when the filament is running out and there's something to hold it when it does run out. This has a um, pause function as well. So you just press the pause, change the filament and carry on. And it also has a recovery from power out. Now we did get a power out here about six months ago and all of the machines recovered beautifully. So I'm expecting this one to do exactly the same thing. Okay, let's bolt a few pieces together. So I do get a bit carried away with these things, wanting to get to the machine and get it working as it were but the things like the packaging and the boxing are kind of important and the packaging is really substantial so this thing arrives it's no damage good strong cardboard box lots of foam filling very well packed Okay, and that's it set up and it really did take 20 minutes and I haven't bothered to do it because it'd be padding it for no good reason. It comes with a manual, it's half a dozen screws, pretty pictures in the manual and you'll be set up in the same time or no time at all. Now, it is the biggest one that they currently have. It's their brand new product, although they have released something called the Orange Storm Giga, and that's 800 by 800 by one meter, and it's their offering into the industrial side of things, but who wouldn't want to get their hands on that? But this one at 420 by 420 by 480 is a very impressive machine and it's along that Neptune lines so the look is the same, the build quality is the same, the ease of putting together is the same and we're going to find out about the ease of use but I'm strongly suspecting it'll be say, the same. Now this comes with the same connectivity that is as a USB port at the front, there's a, a network cable here and it has this addition which I have yet to fit. It has a Wi-Fi card as well and this little addition goes on the side there and we should be able to find that on our Wi-Fi and connect that through Wi-Fi as well. So the connectivity is really great. So this is a brand new machine. I mean, it goes on pre-sale uh, this Saturday, 23rd of September, but it's currently only available for review and I'm lucky enough to get hold of one. Now, in terms of the build quality, the thought of the design process, it, it's really up there. It's on par with all of the other Elegoo machines that I've had and reviewed and I've had no problems really with the Elegoo stuff. So I'm quite excited to get this going and to um, use it in a real way. But first let's finish that setup stuff. Now put it next to the Max 3. So this is the Max 3, this one's the Max 4, the new one. And we've got three jobs we need to do. We need to level the bed, we need to connect the Wi-Fi, and we need to load some filaments. And although it sounds like three difficult jobs, actually, they're three really easy jobs. This leveling the bed has two parts to it. There's a manual setup and then the automatic leveling setup. Manual setup is done with these three knobs underneath here. There's three on the right and three on the left. All you do is go into the screen and press level. Okay, so the screen's a capacitive touch screen and you can see there are four controls, print, prepare, settings and level, and we want level. When you go to level, it'll ask you to confirm you want to do that and then it takes a second to heat up. And the next screen that we're presented with is this one. And what we want is auxiliary. So you press auxiliary, confirm, 
and you will get this display here. Once it's gone to home, we're going to press these points here, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and that will take the head to the position marked by the number. And what you need for this is a very technical tool, a piece of paper. I'm going to press six because that will be that one there. And when it's there, you take your piece of paper and try to slide it under. If you can slide it under, brilliant. If you can't, this knob needs adjusting. And you adjust the knob by turning it that way, which will loosen off. And that means that the bed, which is on a pivot point in the centre, will go up and it will get tighter. If you tighten it up, which is that way, up. Oh. That will pull the bed down and then you can slide the piece of paper underneath. Then you loosen it off until it just grips. And then we repeat that with all of the other points. When you've done that, pressed home, then you e exit the assisted level. It will ask you to confirm. And it will automatically go to the automatic levelling, heat the bed and test the bed level at 121 points. And you just wait for that to finish. Once levelling is completed, it will automatically pull up the screen asking you to confirm and warning you about the Z offset. We go back to this screen and we can see what the Z offset is. So right there. What you do is exactly the same trick. We take a piece of A4 paper and try to slide it under the head. If it won't slide under, then it's too low. If it slides under, but it's too loose, then you need to lower it. And we do that by pressing these up and down buttons. This is the amount that it'll move it by. So if I press that and down, it'll move it by a millimetre. 0.1 of a millimetre, a 0.01 of a millimetre. As it happens, that paper was quite good. So down 0 0.01 of a millimetre and test the paper until you get a tight, well, a bit of resistance on the paper and then you're ready to go. When you've done that, press the back arrow, confirm and it will save your data. And return you back to the input screen. And then the next thing we need to do is connect the Wi-Fi and for that we go into the settings and you can see wireless LAN. Now for a while Elegoo didn't have Wi-Fi settings and you could modify the um, Pro 4 to make it work on a Wi-Fi and I did have a look at that but it was such a lot of trouble it was unbelievable. On this one we just press the Wi-Fi button and it will find the Wi-Fi network. There's my Wi-Fi network. And if I don't have it, then I click on it to connect it. It will pull it up and ask you to enter. There you go. Now I need to enter the Wi-Fi password, which I'm not going to do because that's not my Wi-Fi. And when I've entered the Wi-Fi code, back to the main screen. And that's all there is to Wi-Fi setup with this, which is pretty cool when you think about it. The last thing to do is load some filament and it's done exactly the same way in all of these machines. Put a roll of filament up there on the filament holder, feed it through the filament sensor and bring it down to the print head. To load it, press this little lever here, take your filament and shove it right in. Don't be shy, keep shoving until you feel the resistance. When the filament's at the print head, press prepare, extruder and then load. When you press load, it'll warm up the print head and it'll begin the gear which will load it. A little gear on the top will start to turn and you'll get a little stream of plastic coming out the bottom there. There you go. That is the filament loaded. And that's it all set up and ready to go. Now, I'm pretty 
keen to give it a go, but that's quite a lot of information, and so we're probably going to be doing prints as we go. So there'll be more videos on this when we're doing prints on it, and I'm quite keen to find out what the speed difference actually is, which is why I've set it up next to the Max 3, and here you know, the Max 4, we can do a speed test and see how different they are. Now the software comes in a little baggie and there's a couple of spares there. There's a spare nozzle and a spare uh, feed tube. Elegu always do that actually. This will be a uh, modified Cura. It's Elegu Cura. We've used it before in many of the other videos and I've done videos on how to use Cura and it won't be any different. It'll just be find this machine and click install and then you'll use it just like you use Cura. So if you're interested in using Cura at this basic level, remember everything I do is pretty much at a basic level because I'm only interested in getting the thing to work and do the stuff I want it to do. That's what I'm really interested in. So the machine side of things is all very basic, but luckily Elegu is made for idiots like me. It's so easy to actually get up and run with it and make something well, really, from the day you get it. I mean, this has taken me, I think, an hour all told, and that includes doing the video for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Look out for more on the Max 4, and please do remember to like and subscribe.